Hello, welcome back to some more Halloween themed content. Today's video is going to be focusing on some of my favourite like scary films to watch around this time of year. So basically, you know, not a ranking, it's not films that are um, particularly um, Halloween themed or exclusive to Halloween, it's just films that are suited for Halloween that I like to watch on Halloween, you know, around this time of year. Um, not watching them all this year because I'm actually going through the Halloween franchise to do a video, a rankings video. So I'm watching all 13 of them at the moment. I started with part one and part two last night and um, fell asleep during part three, which I do love. I was just very, very exhausted. Anyway, let's crack on with the first pick and it's one of my favourite films. Don't be mistaken, it's not the bottom one, the Blair Witch from 2016. It's the um, top section, which is the Blair Witch Project from 1997. Now... This film's pretty darn scary in its own right, and, um, you know, it loses impact after several watches, but it's a great film from 1997, and um, I think a few people were fooled by the um, expansive marketing campaign they did, and a few people thought it was actually real footage, you know. It's what, probably the most famous fan footage film, along with stuff like Paranormal Activity. It's not the first fan footage film. I mean, you got stuff like the McPherson tapes from the 80s, and... Um, the last broadcast, which is like a year younger than the Blair Witch Project. Sorry, I said 1997 for the Blair Witch Project. It's actually 1999. It was released in 1999. They started the marketing campaign really early and they were going around universities and things, putting um, posters up, you know, click on the um, site. When the internet wasn't so big and so like prominent in everyday life and lesser people sort of used it. They used an um, internet sort of marketing campaign where you could go on the website and follow the trail and stuff and, um, you know, see clips and things. And they really sold it that this film was real footage. And it's pretty scary in its own right. Um, quick quick um, synopsis, you know, I'll tell you the synopsis briefly. You know, a group of people just um, decided to make a documentary about the legend of the Blair Witch. You know, this witch who lived um, in the woods in Burkittsville somewhere like that anyway um and um in the u.s and um many many years ago you know there's these legends of her like stuff you know i've actually read them they're you know they're real legends that this film's based on and it's things like a group of men went missing and then they were found all like you know carved up and stuff like lying in a um, shallow stream and um there's also another tale about this um guy who was kidnapping um children you know decades ago and um they turned up dead and things and um he said the Blair Witch was telling him to um kidnap them you know stuff like that there's legends about the Blair Witch out there you can actually read online I might have I may have had some of my facts wrong but ties into this film anyway they're making a documentary weird stuff starts to happen they start to realize they're in some kind of weird time warp where they're, it's being controlled and they can't find a way out of the um forest different things happen each night they wake up you know they find like sticks um in certain form made up to look like um witchcraft symbols and whatnot as you can see there that's one of the sort of symbols you know these weird witchcraft um symbols left in the trees made from um sticks things like that you know they find like an ear i think it is of one of their um fellow um documentary makers and it just goes from there and it's got a really cool like sort of creepy ending and it's got you know at the time it was really scary i thought and when i first watched it i was quite um quite fearful of it um like i say loses its impact over time but it's a great film the blair witch project i always enjoy watching it yeah i get that sense of isolation when i watch it you know i can sort of relate you know how the um the um group of three making the documentary feel and you do get a sense of isolation and you know that foreboding like sort of creepy like atmosphere just looming and something bad's going to happen and there's one scene in particular that really freaks me out is where they're um, hearing all the weird noises late one night and um, they hear like a baby crying in the distance. They're in the middle of nowhere. There's no, you know, they're not near like civilization or anything. They're stuck in the f deep in the forest, you know, days into the forest and they're hearing like a baby crying in the distance. It's, it's really freaky. But the Blair Witch, like, can't go wrong. If you've never seen it, do yourself a favour because it's absolute classic and probably the best fan footage film out there in my opinion so i'll also quickly mention another favorite for halloween that's really suited to this time of year i watched this um new release last um week a week ago in fact um to be approximate you know approximately seven days ago and that's the exorcist the classic um william friedkin movie based on the book by pete william peter blatty linda blair as reagan mcneil 
yeah, everyone knows this film normally is into horror, but yeah, it's such a good, you know, um, if you've not seen it for years or you haven't um, ever watched it, do yourself a favour because, you know, it's pretty, you know, it's got some tense scenes in there. Some of it's quite amusing, like, I mean, the practical effects look spectacular, I think, but as good as they look, sometimes when she's like saying all these crazy lines and stuff like, you know, it really makes, it does give you quite a chuckle. It is quite funny in some regard, but it's also a very serious film. It's got some great undertones and um, yeah, best possession film out there. So The Exorcist is definitely um, a Halloween favourite. For me. And um, while we're on the subject of heavy hitters, I'll just give a brief mention to Halloween. This one's obviously perfect for Halloween because it's set on Halloween night, 1978 classic directed by John Carpenter. Excellent film. Rewatched it last night, a part of my um, Halloween franchise um, binge that I'm doing for a video. You know, the marathon I'm doing all 13 films. Um, yeah, looks great in 4K. I've watched the 4K before. The day, the daylight, the scenes in daylight, should I say, look spectacular. Absolutely phenomenal. You know, when the um, girls and Laurie and their friends are like walking down the road and Michael peeps around the bush. Those scenes look remarkable in 4K really you know the colors just really pop and it looks so good on 4k but anyway enough about the 4k let's talk about the film itself yeah one of the best slashes out there possibly like the biggest slasher of all time maybe i mean it's arguable some people may say scream and things like that but halloween you know it's just a classic you know it was made on a fairly low budget become iconic um spawned many many sequels influenced the whole like sort of slasher boom in the 80s with, along with friday the 13th that also Helped it being like a catalyst in that era, you know, for the slasher boom. But Halloween, you know, it's just phenomenal. Perhaps not the first slasher ever made, but definitely the first sort of big one out there, I'd say. You know, we've got Black Christmas before that, which is a proto-slasher and whatnot. Mario Barber's A Bay of Blood, etc. You know, there's, there's some earlier hints of slasher action out there, but this is just, yeah, it's just an absolute classic. Michael Myers is brilliant. His depiction's great. You know, the mask looks great. You know, really cool story behind the mask as well, if you look into that. You know, most people know about that, so I won't bother mentioning it. But yeah, Halloween, you know, got to get Halloween on at this time of year. You know, at least watch it once a year. I'd not watch it for about two years, the first one, because I watched some of the sequels last year, like Ends when it came out and things like that. But yeah, Halloween, get it on. So some more ghoulish um, delights here, and that's um, Reanimator from 1985 and its sequel Bride of Reanimator from 1989. I just thought I'd pull both of them out because if you're going to watch one you might as well watch the other. Um, both really good films. I actually slightly enjoy Bride a little bit more. I thought some of the creatures and stuff that sort of um, come alive at the end were a bit quirkier and you know fun to watch and stuff but the first film is magnificent. Brilliant film directed by Stuart Gordon. You know um, some crazy effects in there. Um, not sure about the first film, but I think with Bride of Reanimator, that um, Screaming Mad George guy did the special effects as well. Um, I think it's directed by Brian Usner, who was more than likely a producer on the first film. If I've got some of that wrong, I'm sorry. I've just not done research. I'm kind of doing it off the cuff, so I'm just going off what I remember and things. But yeah, it saw Jeffrey Combs, crazy, like, mad, um, crazy scientist, doctor guy, you know, there were, um, these two guys... Jeffrey Combs' character being one of them are at um, university and, um, yeah, start experimenting with um, bodies and reanimating them, you know, bringing corpses back to life and stuff. Really fun movie. Let's take a look at the back. I still haven't taken um, this out of the seal. Yeah, so good. It's quite a stacked release. This is a second sight um, release this one yeah herbert west that's i was looking for that actually because it kind of slipped my mind but yeah jeff combs plays the um sort of mad scientist student guy um herbert west and then he's back you know up to his same antics in bride of reanimator it's just got a few more creatures in there and some more wackiness and craziness but yeah we're two brilliantly like ghoulish sort of films to watch at halloween you know with like the reanimated um creatures and corpses and stuff and that guy's really funny as well when he gets reanimated well his head does um, stars Barbara Crampton as well, who's been in a lot of horror movies, the um, first one does. Yeah, excellent, love love the Reanimator films. I don't even mind Beyond Reanimator, which I have um, somewhere, it's in there, yeah, Beyond Reanimator. Have that on Blu-ray too, it's not too bad, not as good as these two, but um, yeah. Do yourself a favour if you've not seen them and um, pick them up. Got the Arrow, that's an Arrow edition, Bride of Reanimator, and then in the UK we had a Second Sight edition, because Arrow did 
reanimator in the US, I mean in a really nice set, but they didn't do it over here that we got it from Second Sight. But hopefully a 4K will come out one day. Looking forward to that. And then you have Frank Henenlotter's crazy little film basket case. I'm um, quite low budget, quite a grimy looking film, you know, set in the city. Um this guy's in a, an apartment and inside his basket he has a um there's something lurking in there that likes to um escape and um go on murderous rampages but yeah basket case is great just a quick mention for basket case this is the trilogy edition all three films on um individual discs but the first film especially is great and the second one's fun didn't like the third one that much i thought the creatures were fun of course you know there's, there's a lot of fun to be had with them and they're not my, you know i don't hate them but the sequels but yeah, the first basket case is brilliant so another good sort of while we're on sort of like weird you know special effects um heavy movies and um, basket case is one to take into consideration for this time and here's a quick look at my edition of um 1988 so um, 976 evil um it's actually directed by robert england you know played freddy krueger in the nightmare on elm street but pretty fun movie here like you know it's about like um these these two cousins and one of them's a bit of sort of like a badass and the other one's really nerdy and gets picked on a lot at um, school uh anyway um a sort of like demons unleashed and sort of possesses the um nerdy cous cousin after um a horoscope reading it's a sort of cursed um a cursed reading or phone line or what have you need to revisit this one but it's a lot of fun you know you got some good special effects in there crazy little scenes it's really cool watching the um cousin get crazy you know the geeky one the nerdy cousin he gets a little crazy and goes after um all the bullies and it's really funny it, you know it's got some good stuff in there i really like 976 evil so it's another good one that's you know got some decent special effects it's a one for halloween for sure and um earlier we was talking about the um slasher boom you know our halloween sort of got the slasher boom going and then friday the 13th also as a catalyst well another a film that's a part of that sort of boom area from 1984 um it's quite brilliant actually and it's well suited to this time of year not just october for halloween but autumn in general you know from september middle of september and that's the mutilator as you can see this is the arrow video edition really fun film i think it's also called full break it's got a song about full break in there like this sort of like you know really like sort of like happy clappy like cheerful song but the film's not cheerful at all really you know this group of people group of friends go to stay in this guy's um dad's um sort of like little condo if you will on the beachfront it's a bit shabby though you know it's not the nicest of condos but you know it's adequate and um they go to stay there and they start getting knocked off in brutal fashion and you know it's got a bit of a twist at the end and things but yeah really good film the mutilator well suited to the autumn and this time of year in general and another sort of like double here one that would make a good double bill actually um i didn't have that in mind but looking at it i just picked these out because they're both stephen king adaptations and that's um silver bullet and graveyard shift i think they're adapted from um short stories i might be wrong with silver bullet that might be a full book with a different name i think it's got i think it's a book with a different name or a short story with a different name from king i i, I forget but graveyard shift as well that's a short story adaptation but they're great films as well i mean silver bullet's getting a 4k from screen factory and um is it this month? No, next month, November, they're bringing out a 4K of that. And then you've got Graveyard Shift. They're both screen factories. That's a collector's edition of Silver Bullet with the epic artwork. And then you've got the um, screen factory release of Graveyard Shift. Um, Silver Bullet's a sort of typical werewolf movie, but really fun. Um, I think it stars the actor um, Gary Busey in there. He's in there. And then you've got Graveyard Shift, which is great. It's about these guys working at a mill and trying to... Um, what do you call it refurb it the mill gets refurbed and they're trying you know they're trying to refurb it i think and like sort of like reopen it and stuff and um it's got a rat problem and there's a humongous problem in the underground underneath the mill there's a lot of underground passages and the sewers and things and there's a big problem and it's a very um hideous creature but you know you'll have to watch it and find out but there's a good double bill there for halloween silver bullet and graveyard shift and then speaking of horror classics, got a real heavy hit here, and it's um, Candyman. Tony Todd is, um the character Candyman. Great film, great story um, from Clive Barker. The film's done really well. Um, 
yeah, it's a classic in my opinion. Um, Tony Todd's fantastic as the Candyman. Um, the original's the best. I mean, there's four of them now. There's four Candyman films, and um, the original's the one way to go. This first film is just brilliant. Um, it's got some good undertones as well about um, society and things, and like segregation of communities and whatnot, and things like that. And um, but more so, the horrors on point. You know, you got a great. Um, antagonistic killer in the candy man you know who appears after you say his name five times in the mirror and you've got um a bit of a mystery behind it as they try to uncover his origins and things like that and um another good one suited for halloween is the tales from the hood really fun it's a screen factory release um this one probably get a 4k at some point as well and the sequels to this as well i've never watched them there's two sequels i think um this is great though a uh, couple of good quotes in there as well. It's an anthology. You know, it's got some great segments. Um, definitely one for Halloween, you know, especially being an anthology. And there's probably even a Halloween-themed segment in there. I can't quite remember. It's been a minute since I watched it, but it's a lot of fun tales from the hood, you know. You'll be knee-deep in the shit. Pretty bad impression, but still, you, if you if you know, you know. You'll know what I mean. But, yeah, it's a, it's a really fun film. It's got some really interesting segments, and I think I like them all. Um yeah, there's Candyman and Tales from the Hood anyway, both both well suited for um, Halloween watches. Next up, one that's grew on me over the years, probably mentioned that before, that's 1984's The Return of the Living Dead. Really fun um, zombie movie, you know, it's a black comedy, it's a horror comedy, a lot of fun. Basically, people who get um, stranded in a um, mortuary, or a morgue, I think it's a morgue actually. You know, whereas they're draining bodies and things and preparing them after death. And, um, yeah, the zombies are trying to get in. It's really wacky, really fun. It's got some good gore in there. This one used to frighten me a little bit when I was really, really young and I seen it on TV, when I saw parts of it on TV. the Just the zombies in general going brains, like, really did um did scare me somewhat. Um, not now, though. I just find it really fun and enjoyable. And I've never always, like, liked it that much, but... Since watching like the 4K from Screen Factory, which got released last year, you know, I started to really enjoy it. And it's definitely one that's primed for Halloween. Well suited. And then I've pulled out um, three Blu-rays here. Well, one's a 4K to... Um, but actually, two are 4Ks, excuse me. This both are 4 Two are 4Ks and one set is a Blu-ray set. Absolute classics. I thought I'd mention them. Can't go wrong with Creepshow Anthology, um, based uh, written by Stephen King, directed by George A. Romero fantastic i did a video on this release um earlier this year but this is the way to go the screen for new screen factory and 4k that came out a few months ago i think it was in june yeah just a great 4k great film for halloween you know if you're looking for something with the scary theme and some wackiness and some you know and you got like loads of good segments yeah really fun for halloween and of course a bona fide classic evil dead this used to creep me out too. The um, Deadites used to really creep me out in this film. Um, this is the original's the best, I think. I know Evil Dead 2's great and has its fans and Army of Darkness as well. And the remake and the new one, Evil Dead Rise, is really good. Um, don't think there's a bad film in this series. Even the um, t TV show, um, Ash vs. Evil Dead's a lot of fun and it doesn't have to say it's welcome as the episodes are quite short. You know, they're under 30 minutes. But the Evil Dead, can't go wrong. Sam Raimi directed, um, yeah. Stein Bruce Campbell, of course. Yeah, I can't go wrong for Halloween with the Evil Dead. And also, there is some stinkers in there, I suppose, but you can't go wrong with any of the Nightmare on Elm Street um, films for Halloween as well, the Freddy Krueger movies. You know, select a couple of them for Halloween or watch the whole lot. You know, the first one, preferably, or um, number three, I'd say Dream Warriors. You know, the other, some other good ones in there. It's just a couple I'm not too keen on. And I probably spoke about that before on the channel. But yeah, still any of them are worth a watch around this time of year. And if you've never seen them, you know, you're missing out on some great action. Because Freddy Krueger is so much fun. He's such a such a fun um, antagonist. But there's a, there's a few classics that are, that are definitely good recommendations for um, the spooky season. I picked out two again. Sorry about all the um, cuts in this video. It's just a bit easier to do an edit, you know, and then you can focus on pulling out you know the films and talking about them um i've got a couple here this is the last two in the recommendations that i've done for this video and that's the living dead at manchester morgue um pretty awesome 70s um italian directed um horror movie set in um made in italy i think but set in the uk set in manchester obviously and yeah it's about a zombie outbreak and um yeah got some gnarly stuff in there some great zombie action and just just a lot of fun really seen it a couple of times i always enjoy it i think it's a good creep fest from um, halloween and yeah 
the Living Dead at Manchester Morgue. So if you want to pick it up, the way to go is this um, steel book, really. I mean, it's gorgeous from Synapse. But you can also pick up a standard release from Synapse at a better price. You know, a, a lower, a more cost-effective price. But I opted for the steel book a few years ago because I thought it was fantastic. And, yeah, wonderful film, really. You know, it's got some good atmosphere. It's got a few laughs. You know, it's really funny um in some in some aspects like it's not meant to be funny i just find it amusing how like ray lovelock's um character talks to his um female like companion in the film you know his counterpart who's helping him um unravel the mystery of the um dead um being reanimated and how he talks to her sometimes just really old-fashioned and quite quite amusing just how he's like getting the car and things like that but anyway that's the living dead at manchester morgue and then the original the woman in black based on the um susan hill book i think i actually have the book never read it it was a tv movie on um channel three in the uk which is itv now or whatever um channel three in the eight, late 80s i think 89 or something yeah the woman in black a lot of atmosphere great story um i prefer this to the daniel radcliffe um remake you know the remake with um the harry potter guy and daniel radcliffe i prefer this one i think it's creepier it's not got as many um jump scares and like all out scary bits compared to the remake but it's just creepier in tone it's you know it's a bit older i think they captured it well you know what the essence of what the story is meant to be about and there's some there's a frightening scene in there where the witch is hovering above um the bed of the um uh solicitor whomever it is who's gone to deal with the um dead lady's um books and property he um is in a bed at an um you know boarding house or whatever a little hotel or an inn, we should say a pub or inn or something. And um, yeah, she's just levitating above the bed. And it's just it's just the things of nightmares are made of. Yeah, Probably the best scene in the film as well. But Warning Black's a load of um, fun. The original one. So do sort that out. If you've, I mean, m m probably most people who watch this have probably seen the Daniel Radcliffe remake and not this um, original TV movie. But um, yeah, I, I think this is a bit better. Yeah, it's got some good atmosphere. Um, that's it. That's... um. Some of my favourite like sort of picks for Halloween. They're not Halloween themed films. I deliberately because I've done a video on films that are actually centred around Halloween. I decided to just do a film of a video of scary films, scary movies that are suited for this time of year. You know the creepy season, spooky season. So um, hope you enjoyed the video, and that's the end of it. So thanks for watching. Bye.